Let's talk about the fundamental counting principle. It's as easy as one, two, three. Here's what it says in very math language. If there are p possibilities for one event and q possibilities for a second event, then the number of events for both possibilities is p times q. Let me show you what I mean. So in other words, p times q equals the number of total possible outcomes. So let's take an example of something I love sandwiches. Let's say we have some different types of bread here. So whole grain, rye, ciabatta. We have some different kinds of meat, ham, beef, turkey, salami, and we have some different kinds of cheese, Swiss, cheddar, and provolone. Now you might be thinking, Marsha, I only see a P and a Q here, so what do I do if I have more than a P and Q? Well, likewise, the fundamental counting principle says it actually doesn't matter. P, Q, L, M, N, we could continue. The moral of the story is that we're always going to be multiplying them. Really, when you think about it, the fundamental counting principle is just a special type of a combinations problem. So let's look and see how many options we have here in our bread category. I can see that I have whole grain, rye, and ciabatta. So that's three possibilities. In my meat category, I have ham, beef, turkey, and salami. So that would be four possibilities. And then here with my cheese, I've got Swiss, cheddar, and provolone, so three possibilities. I'm gonna go ahead and now multiply them to figure out how many different combinations I can have for my sandwich. I can see that when I do my math, three times four times three gives me 36 possible combinations of sandwiches. Now I could also draw a tree diagram to show all this as well. That's it. That's the fundamental counting principle, and that's why I said it's as easy as one, two, three. Just remember, it's a special type of combinations problem that you're going to be multiplying your number of possibilities together. So just like I said before, if we had another um, item that I wanted to put on my sandwich, like condiments, and let's say I want to choose mustard or mayonnaise, I could put that in my formula as well. So instead of having three times four times three, I could say three times four times three times mustard and mayonnaise, so two different combinations, which would give me 72 different combinations if I had that condiments example. So again, I could keep adding on different things on my sandwich and I would just be multiplying that number of combinations each time. I hope you found this video helpful and you now have a better idea of how to work with the fundamental counting principle.